<laughs> all right, it's a banner day. I got my brothers on the boat, all four of them. And the plan today is to run far from where we're gonna fish. I know it sounds funny, you wanna go close to where you're fishing, but if you do that every single time, you'll never learn anything. You know, if you always park where you're gonna fish, launch where you're gonna fish, come out of where you're gonna fish, you're never gonna learn anything. So make yourself a little uncomfortable and that's where you'll, you'll learn things. So we're about eight miles from where we normally fish and that during the run, we'll be able to look around and see what's going on. Because if we go out there and we catch fish on a normal spot, and even if it's not great fishing, if it's just decent fishing, most people would stay on it, me included. And then we'll never learn a damn thing and we'll never find great, great fishing. So we're gonna run from here to where we're normally gonna fish and we're gonna look everywhere in between. And we'll probably get some live baits, nets, Mike's gonna throw the net. And in between that, we'll look for breaking fish as the sun starts to go down and we'll jig them up and cast on them. That's the plan and everything will change by then, I'm sure. So we were cruising, checked out some few spots that we've been catching fish on and spots some friends have been catching fish on. And it took us a while, but we found some good stuff. Matter of fact, I dropped a spoon down really quick just to see what was there and got hit right away and broke off a spoon. Always check your knots. We're on the highway with this boat a lot and they get damaged sometimes with the wind blowing a spoon around. Even though we secure it, they still take a beating. I should have checked it, but anyway, we're gonna get back over them. And they should be coming up soon here. That's all pollen in the water. You see them? There's some good marks. Oh yeah. Hold on. You got it? You want it? You got it. You want it? You got it. Do I uh All right, other side of the boat, Tommy. All right, drop it down. I'll come over here. I'll show you real quick. Yeah, All right. So this is, this is the first time my brother's jigging with this type of spoon. Now, even though it's shallow, we're drifting, so it'll pay out, you know, a scope away from us. So I'm going to drop it down straight to the bottom. It's very shallow here. Huh. 13 foot, something hit it on the way down. Did you see it stop? 
so I'm hit it about eight feet down. All right, so I drop it to the bottom to get started. Then I'll give it up just a couple cranks. So you see the line go slack, it's on bottom, right? Give it just a couple cranks. And we'll start with this. Now we're gonna go up and down with it. Now, if you watch the line, I might need to get a little closer if you see the line. If I, I wanna stay tight to the spoon so I'll feel the slightest tick. But if I stay too tight, like if I leave the line like this, I kill the action of the spoon. See how the line's so straight? The spoon looks terrible. So I gotta put some slack in the line. But if I do this, now I'm not gonna feel the hit on the way down and I just got fouled. So if I just drop it too fast, if I get hit, I'm not gonna feel it when I fouled up my line. So the trick is to find something in between. Drop it fast enough so you don't kill the action, but slow enough so you feel the tick. So try to keep three or four inches of slack. So watch. Oh, he just had one. All right, so you see that little slight bow in the line? Slight bow. Go a little faster. Now the spoon falls at different rates each time. Sometimes it flutters sideways. Sometimes the tail just goes down and up. But you got to master it. And you can get it. It's not hard to do it, really. It just takes a little time. Just keep a slight slack in the line, just enough to not kill the action of the spoon, and just tight enough so you'll feel when he ticks. Now I'll jig a few times like this. If I don't feel anything, I'll give it a couple cranks. I'll do it again. And another real popular way here, drop it straight to the bottom. And it's called squidding. You just reel straight up. Man. And then you just reel steady straight up. You can vary the speed. This is a high speed reel. I'll just drop it straight down and reel it up. We call it squidding. And it works, it works really well sometimes, especially in deeper water. And that's it. We're gonna whack a few and show you what they look like. Jim, don't slip on the thing under your foot. Keep the fish in the water this time, okay? Big one, Tim! Ooh. He's got a horse! He's got a hook. Nope. Doesn't feel like it yet. I don't know. Nice. It's a good fish. Yeah. Oh, you got it in the mouth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as soon as I say it is. We don't want to see splashing, though. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Now, when I say splashing, we don't want to see because when that spoon is underwater and the fish can thrash, the water controls it and slows down the spoon, right? If it's in the air, it can thrash and be lost. That's it. Manhandle that fish. Hold this, Robert. Yep, you got it. Don't drop it. Woo! That's a nice fish. Look at that. Nothing wrong with that. Look at that one. <laughs> Here you go, Timmy. On that shattered glass. Does it have another spoon in its mouth? It's no, bucks. it doesn't. That's a hundred bucks. I lost a spoon. So if, you, if you cranked on it with a spoon, it's a hundred bucks. But no. Whoop. Good fish, Tim. Way to break the ice. Thank you. That is a nice fish, right? Oh, yeah. That's a beauty. 12 pounder. Solid 12 pound fish. I don't want to eat one. Dorsal fin's can. already up and the fight was short, so I'm going to go ahead and send her off. Good job, Tim. We're going to break the ice. Violently nice. breaks the ice. Yeah, Tim. There they are. There they are again, kitties. Both sides, all striped bass under the boat. I'm going to go until I start losing these marks because I want to drift through them. You know, you don't want you don't want to stop as soon as you see them. Unless it's a dead calm day. But we got a little breeze, so we want to go past the piece, past the piece of water that we like, past these fish, just a little bit until we stop marking them. You see they're on that little bit of a drop off there. Still marking them. Not really under us anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the boat. I'm gonna go ahead and turn. Okay. Because these guys are all fishing off one side of the boat. We want to use the whole length of the boat here. All right, send them down. All right, let's do it. Now, as you get good with this, I, I tell my friends, you know, my buddies, my sons, no surprise hits. And surprise hit is when you see a guy doing this, he's just jigging. And then all of a sudden there's a fish there. He didn't feel that fish. 
he was sweeping it up for the, to move the jig again and that's when he felt the fish was there the fish already had it so really try to concentrate and feel that hit on the way down so you can set the hook and avoid those surprise hits the first few fish you're going to get are going to be surprised but as you get better with it you'll feel that just slight tick and you can really cross his eyes but you feel that tick and you know he's there because they're only going to hold it for so long sometimes they'll grab it and swim with it but most times you know it's a hard steel object they're going to drop it and they feel it's not fleshy you know there's fish under the boat and we're positioned really nice too so we're going to come right across them <laughs> was not a surprise hit. Good job. He saw it. Rob, nice job. Oh, it was a nice job. I timmed it. All right, all right. Get it back down. Drop it straight down. They all chased it up. I guarantee you. I timmed it. You were with 10 other, but you, you weren't surprised. I was not surprised. I saw you feel the hit. That was sweet. I saw you look at the screen. Were you squirting it or you were jerking it? No, I was jumping it. Jerking. Up. All right, everyone drop, drop down. Yeah, you doubled up. I knew it was gonna go off. Guys, Tommy dropped yours right down. There's fish chasing his. Good job, man. I'm just that was two you had on. I'm just judging by the way it's bouncing. Yeah. Nice, man. Oh. You had one on, I heard it. Your bail flipped him, Tommy? Drop it right down, Tommy. Keep his in the water. Drop it right down, there's fun chasing him. All right, reel up to the surface, just a few feet down, because they're right below his. All right, bring it to me. That's what's nice about these spoons. <laughs> is when they got if you see the hook is really nice and deep, pull up Rob. You can grab the spoon and lift them right in. Oh, All right. Uh, Bring it to me, Tim. Yeah. There's so many fish down there. Now there's a pair. That guy. There's a pair, a pair of uh, pretty fish right there. In Mine's the mouth. Pretty, very pretty fish. Hold that, Tim. There's beautiful nickels. Ben Parker spoon. Tommy's hooked up. Record Tommy. Nice job, Tommy. I got this. You weren't surprised either. You set nope. the hook on a tap. Stick it out. Oh, it's all the way out. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. Where's the boat? Oh, he's hooked he's up. He's still too. hooked up. He's still hooked up. I think another one chased it. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm hooked up. Right. We're recording. Who? Mike, you're right over. Mike, you're right over. <laughs> Wait, I'll we'll do some more filming. Why not? I had the camera the camera on me <laughs> like it should be Tommy good job now we're talking nice fish Tommy be patient be patient all right see with these spoons what I do is I grab it I look now this spoon this hook was not deep so I didn't lift it by the spoon see how it just barely had it I probably still could have, but if I don't see it really deep, I don't lift it by the spoon. Actually, I'm gonna hold it up. Tell me it wasn't deep. You need any pliers to get it out. I don't understand. <laughs> Smaller fish. He got it good too. Pretty. The nail probably just kept on spawning. All right, for guys that are brand new to this and never done this anything like this before. We've only been fishing about 30 minutes and we've probably done eight drifts in just 30 minutes. As soon as we're off the fish, we're back on them. We don't spend any time jigging over dead water. We really rely heavily on our electronics for this. If they're not under the boat, move. Go find them again. It's very proactive, you know, we're constantly uh, attacking. We're always on offense. I'm just seeing some small scattered marks now. They're still there. Not as thick as they were. Keep scanning the horizon though for busters, you know. Hooked up. Hooked up. Nice. Timbo. Timbo Biaka Batuka. There was only one fish on the screen that time. That fish was probably following you for the longest time. Drop it down. Now's when you want to catch it. Oh, right. Yeah, no. But normally yes, but not for this. Keep it as close to him as long as possible without tangling. Nice. Hey Rob, come over here. Yep. 
Jig at that depth right there. They're under us again, guys. Really thick now. Oh, yeah. Keep his head in the water. Try to get there's fish under his. Old school. Beautiful. <laughs> Ready? I miss Tommy with that. He just pops in with a fish. Old school. The rod tip down first. Right now, right when you say drop that, you mean go like this. I mean, just beat it back down because. Yeah. Oh, Tommy set the hook on. Okay, realistic. Tom, you read that one nice. That's the key. Put the rod tip down first. And right now, right when you say drop that, you mean go like this. Actually, drop it back down and just watch his, because you want we want to poach one off of him. That's cool. He's coming up by Mike. Mike, poach one off of him. I'm trying. Lots of them, bro. Lots of them down there. You know what I'm talking about, right? When you drop it, that's that gray area. Yes. Yeah. Where you want it to be slack. You're better off too slack than too tight. That's a that's that's a really good point. You're better off too slack than too tight. If you're too slack, you may not feel a hit but you'll hook more fish because you're not killing the action of your spoon. The action on the spoon is how the spoon flutters through the water. And if you have any tight tightness on your line, you, you won't flutter, it'll just drop straight down, straight up and down. Another beauty. Good job, Tommy. All right. Another beauty. Good job, Tommy. All right. He's hooked up behind you. All right. Good job, brother. Run the fish. Good job, Run Tom. Run the meat. Oh, yeah, stay with me. Oh, yeah, stay with me. Stay with me. Every time I felt the slightest little bump, I was so right. pulling on that thing. Don't let it go slack. It kind of felt like a jerk. Yeah. I kept yanking yep. on that Here. thing. Tim forgot he was recording. Good job. Send it loose. Ready? Right down. Go right down, poach one off of him. The screen is full of them, show, show the screen, Tim. That was the fish we just released. Head first, man, Rich Colson made that. I'm a big fan of Rich Colson, that's Come my on. favorite yeah. rod and reel right. there. My brother Rob got you. Huh? <laughs> I call it my lucky rod myself. Come on. And I love a lot of action. <laughs> Oh yeah! All right. In the mouth. Another Ben Parker. Nickel spoon. Good job, Robert. In the mouth. These, the hooks on these things. <clears throat> they grab so good. Like that's not a giant fish. Oh. And he still, got, <laughs> and he still is bit. He got so good with that. Look at that. Look how good they. But it fought. I mean, it was. It was yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, look. Look how good these hooks grab. You hooked up? Hooked up. Alright, release it. Oh. Hey, you got a bunker! Look at the screen. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Tom, you got a bunker. Keep that. That's right. <laughs> we might need that later. <laughs> I'm gonna make oil out of him. I'm gonna put his on my BKD, make it stinky. Stink fish. I'm gonna apply your What's your dad hook? Look at the screen. Uh, we got 24. 24. Look at look at even this hook even grabs this thing. <laughs> Down the middle. Butter him Let up, go, baby. Oh, 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 are you hooked up? I still got it. I got it. Nice! He's still hooked up! <laughs> Did you hear that hook set? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, put, her, put it right here, Tommy. Doubled up. These guys won't let me catch a fish. I was buttering up my BKD. I'm hooked up. Oh, jeez. Oh, my, my guy's running. He's buttoned up. Who's that? Oh, Tommy, I think he's wrapped in you. Uh, I'm hooked up. Oh, someone's back. Yeah. Whose is this? Run back, Mike. Boom, Michael. All right. Stingray. Game fish. Off, huh? Marlin. Oh, now I'm stuck in him. I'm sorry. Lift it up. He's gone under the boat. He's gone under the boat. 
There we go. There we go. We got some craziness going on here. We had three on fire at one time. We lost all of them. This is a brand new wheel. Like the side, right? came off? Oh no, Tommy's was brand new. No, mine was brand new. Brand new leader too? I don't know who's a new leader. You gotta retie it. Uh, What's this rod right here? Good dude? job, Mike. Yo, grab oh, that rod. rod. Yeah, I got that. This is the last spoon I got right here, dude. We went through so many spoons. Oh, it's all right. Nice one, Mike. Not bad. That's a, that's uh that is one of the top fish. No, mine mine was bigger. He goes no no no. Yeah, that's the winner. It's the longest fish of the day. Well, I pulled another one in, man. Good job, Mike. You were saving the best for last. That's how it goes, right? Yeah. Oh, oh. Dude, that was. Did you see that, dude? That's not. Barely, barely lifted man. the hook and it just dropped right out. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Kept, that means you kept it good and tight. Good job, brother. There you go, baby. Good, good job, man. Another one. I, I gave you a spoon, right? I uh, know. Right. Someone's rod, though. Yeah. Dude, we can't lose this one. It's the last one. Jesus, 30? Uh, I don't know what they're 28 plus feet, something like that. Remember, uh, not back. It was just going. It was getting further and further and further away. And I kept that thing bent. And I know I set that hook. Yeah. Good, good job, Mike. Hey, here we go. You want to came loose. Perfect. I was just about to record. Tommy's putting on a clinic. So Tommy, these are my brothers. I've been fishing with them my entire life. I'm almost 50 years old, so we've been doing this a long time. But they've never done jigs before. Have you done spoons no. before? First time doing spoons. All right. So what? What have you got nailed down? You got oh, the dialed feedback's down. fantastic. Mine is way. <laughs> Tells you when to set the hook. So. <laughs> Tim just had a great question. He says, "Why are they sitting in the same exact spot? You can see the waypoint, and it's a uh, great question. The perfect timing." Right now the tide is coming in, which means there's some type of current, right? It's almost at the top of the tide, so the current is slowing down, but there is current. The reason those fish are hanging into one spot is we're looking up into about, straight ahead is about six feet of water. Directly behind us is a channel that drops to 40 foot. And it steps down the whole way. Those fish are down on the transition, so they're on the, about halfway up the hill, you'd say. And the current is rushing over them. So they're resting out of the current and they're feeding. So any bait that comes by in the current, they ambush, they come down. Now, they could just be resting. We don't see a lot of bait right now, but there's the mark we had the fish on. This is the transition. And up here it says eight, you can see that. So you'll see the, uh, you can see that transition right there. And that's where they are. They're right on that transition. They're staying out of the current and they're using the current to feed. And there they are right there. And we got the, oh my goodness, those are bigger marks. I know a lot of guys still don't use side scan. I really rely on it heavily for this because it's so shallow up here. And see all that water that we can see? The Simrad Active Imaging Transducer. Uh, with the multiple elements, it can look very shallow. So what, it, what that means is it shifts between elements. There's multiple elements, different angles. So deeper, you might use an element that looks straight down more, right? As you get shallow, it shifts between them. As it shifts between them, even when we go shallow, we can still see far off onto a plane. So 11 feet of water, you can see it's 20 foot to the left. We minus our depth, so that's really about, you know, so, you know, 20 minus 11, about nine feet to the left right there. So you always want to minus your depth from this number to get the exact distance from the boat. I don't know if you can tell by the video because when someone's hooked up, it's fast and furious, but when someone's hooked up, these guys aren't clearing lines. They're dropping lines down. We've had a few tangles because of that, but we want to catch more fish. You reel a striper up, I guarantee every striper you reel up has got other stripers chasing behind it. Actually, only one tangle. Only one tangle from yeah. that? So we be pretty good. Drop them in, guys. All right. Not marking them just yet, but we're about to be over them. So you heard what you said. We only had really one tangle, which is not too bad because we're being aggressive with it. So say Tim hooks up, instead of clearing lines, Rob's gonna drop one down. Tommy's gonna drop one down. Maybe not all the way to the bottom, but you gotta work it close because he's guaranteed there's lots of other stripers following. How many times, you know, you hook a fish, comes off, and then you hook it, oh, I hooked him again. You probably didn't hook him again. You probably hooked that follower. I've had, you know, multiple hookups on, say, an umbrella rig, get nine baits on it. And you're reeling the umbrella rig and you have one fish on by the time you get up you have four or five because they all latched on well that fish is swimming with that umbrella rig. he's shaking it he's working those other baits the other fish are fighting over it trying to pluck those baits out of his mouth and you get multiple hookups it's the same thing with the spoon look at all those right there so that fish is swimming around you're fighting him that spoon is flaring it's flashing they're all trying to steal it from him you drop another spoon down have your buddy drop one down multiple hookups 
You could turn a two or three fish day into a five or six fish day. Or even a one fish day into a two fish day, and that could be a big deal. Be aggressive, go for it. If your buddy gets mad, what a hook set! Tommy, picture perfect. All right, he's under you guys. All right, clear yours. Is he under or over? He's under. Nice shot, come on back. Tim, go ahead and clear. Okay, Rob, clear. All right, now go, yeah, go around. Oh, he did a legal move, he hugged his brother. All right, now Rob, drop it right back down. But be ready to clear it out. You don't need to go to the bottom now. The fish are gonna be in the top part of the water take column. Okay. Only go about- Let them take drag if you want. Only go about 10 foot, 15 foot down and work it 10 foot down. Tim, you too, get in the water. Just work the top 10 feet, Tim. This is my baby brother. Hello. <laughs> I've never heard that as an answer for it. Can I keep a fish if it's small enough? Yeah, all well, new regulations. You know we don't keep big fish anyway. No, I know. But that's a good question. Like we were kids, it was always like, is that a keeper? Right, oh, we don't. Okay. Ooh, that one's got shoulders. Oh, <laughs> Pretty. Bob. Woo! I've been baptized. Tom, your hook sets are a thing of beauty. You get, you get that. You get that from your older brother. You see the hook set on that thing? The way he yeah. tagged that fish. That was sweet. This is the last spoons we got. We broke a few fish off just because we haven't been maintaining our knots because we've been excited. It's my fault. If you catch a few fish, you gotta check these. They really check them after every fish, but especially we have bluefish in the area. We don't have blues right now, but we're in salt water. You know how you'd help? There's bluefish in the water. You get a spoon and you taste the water. If it's salty, there's bluefish in the water. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Get out. Nice. <laughs> well, the last, the last ones. One guy says, "Why do you <laughs> censor Tim so much?" <laughs> He says, is it for the adult language? I said, bingo! <laughs> and the post after that was like, I thought Mickey Rooney was dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're on, guys. Who's on? Yep. There it is. Oh, he was on the screen too, Mike. Oh, wait, now he's still on. He just went, he went the opposite way. Nah. Good job, Mike. Yeah. That'll get it done. Beautiful. Another view. Center back. Good whacking other one. Come on to there. Look at it on the screen. Yeah, it's right here. That's crazy. You see how hard they were. Look at this. There he is. Dude, you can even see the line on there. You see, see that? I can see the spoon and I can see the fish. And see the other stripers? Oh this was, hey guys, this is proof. This is what I've been saying the whole time. Oh, One, two, three, four, line, five. Boy. Drop your lines down, Mike. Right. Remember I was telling you guys? No. There he is, there he is, here he is. Look at this, there he is. Dude, you can even see the line on there. Do you see, see that? I can see the spoon and I can see the fish. And see the other stripers? This was, <laughs> hey guys, this is proof. This is what I've been saying the whole time. One, two, three, four, five. Drop your lines down, Mike. Right. Remember I was telling you guys? Now the rain's dropped out. I was saying. Good job, Tim. Thank you Let's very give much. You a little mail. It was very fun. Right down. Go whack another one. All right, let's go back over them. Everything we're seeing today is showing these fish hanging close to the bottom. You know, we're expecting midday for them to be close to the bottom. Oh. Sun's high in the sky. And as the sun goes down, they'll work their way up, but these fish aren't doing that. Yeah. They're getting a little smaller as the day's going on. These spoons don't discriminate. They whack big ones, small ones. They whack them all. Ben Parker, nickel spoon. Look at that. Good job. Nice. See you later. I'm seeing a, seeing a jig here, someone's jig. Just came up, just hit the bottom. Someone just hit the bottom, came up, just hit the bottom now, came up. Going down bottom, just hit the bottom. If we stayed 
to where we were for just another half an hour, we'd have had 100 fish that day. It was nuts. We left and they were biting. We, left, we had a triple and then we went in. <laughs> Almost a triple and went in. I'm just glad I caught more than I lost, but it was close. <laughs> oh! Oh, Tommy, you just pulled it out of his mouth. Drop it down. I got going on here, Tommy. Same thing. Lamb chops. You don't have a uh, lamb chop suppliers? So why are you giving all this information to me?